Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, the program celebrating the achievements of cars on Australian roads and racetracks. Join us as we look back on the defining points of our feature car and take a road trip with a proud enthusiast. And if you're in the market, we'll also get the latest advice from the Shannon's auctions team. So let's get things rolling with the Ford that handed market dominance to Holden, the AU Falcon. The AU Falcon was a much better car than it looked. Ford Australia's radical new Falcon for the 21st century was the victim of poor marketing decisions and confused design. But beneath the controversial Ford New Edge bodywork lay a vehicle more uniquely suited for Australia than perhaps any car since the HQ Holden. The AU's inline six-cylinder engine, extremely strong body and rugged suspension with a brilliant IRS on the premium variants ensured that the further it was driven from the big smoke, the better equipped it was to handle Australia's worst conditions than was its sleek VT Commodore rival. Timing was another issue confronting the AU and yes, the initials did stand for Australia. When it was released in October 1998, buyers had been in love with the VT Commodore for 14 months. Ford Australia's Vice President of Engineering, Ian Vaughan, insisted to journalists that the Falcon was a more modern design, but people made up their own minds, mostly in the negative. Mark, do you agree that as a V8 supercar, the AU looked Fantastic. Oh, it certainly did. I remember the excitement amongst Ford teams in 1998 when this car was being developed in a US wind tunnel. Some shots came out and it was just, you know, this beautiful curved XR8 nose cone, this knife-edged front spoiler. Mm. It, it looked like something going about 300 kilometres an hour, just standing still. Hard to believe that it was the same shape as the AU Forte. It was just designed from the beginning to be a race car, like most cars are, in my view. Well, when the, when the first shots came out, it looked very, very aerodynamic. And I know all the teams were very excited about how fast this car was going to be. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way, which I'll get to a bit later. The real problem lay with the entry-level Forte and the Futura. Ford Australia's marketing executives had decided that the price should be kept right down. The Forte came to market some $2,000 cheaper than a Commodore executive. But the marketing guys had their timing out by more than a decade. That hose-out style cabin with its nasty cheap plastic in numerous unmatched greys was not what even the fleet buyers wanted in 1998. They willingly paid extra for the Holden. Even the fact that the XR variants and even the Fairmont and Fairmont gear looked better didn't really help perceptions of the AU. The AU2 featured 16-inch wheels to fill out the guards and superior refinement, but the Falcon was never again going to head its rival in the sales race. The highlight of the AU3 was a power increase for the XR8 to 220 kilowatts, but the BA couldn't arrive soon enough. Mark. Did the AU Falcon fare better on the racetrack than it did in the sales race? No, unfortunately not. If Ford Australia was hoping that racetrack success was going to boost the AU's showroom sales, it failed to deliver. Ford V8 supercar teams were champing at the bit to get the new AU Falcon sedan onto the racetrack in 1999 as its curvaceous body shape and four headlight XR8 nose suggested it was going to be a very fast race car. The AU embraced Ford's new edge design language with a steeply raked windscreen and large dropaways at the front of the bonnet and sides of the boot. This new shape resulted in an 11% reduction in aerodynamic drag compared to the previous EL model, setting a new benchmark for fuel efficiency. Its confronting shape also polarised public opinion, but all sins would be forgiven if it proved to be the rocket ship on the racetrack that such a purposeful design suggested it would be. However, it was to prove as disappointing on the track as it was in the showrooms. John, many people still scratch their heads and wonder how Ford Motor Company got it so wrong with this car. They did get it wrong, mm. and they knew they'd got it wrong, and uh, about nine months after the launch of the of the Falcon, the AU, I was retained as a marketing consultant at Ford and it was almost war between the marketing people and the engineering people, both yeah. blaming each other. In fact, everyone was to blame a bit. Mm. 
Uh, Ford's laudable ideas about engineering to have the height for the rough roads mm. and everything was at odds with the, the cheap, the poverty pack of the Forte, which got the little wheels and mm. the little tyres and terrible. this great gap between the guards. But if anyone in Ford tried to tell the designers, the engineers, they were, they were shouted down because mm. they weren't experts on design, the engineers were. So there was this war between marketing and engineering. And as you have suggested yourself, if Ford was confused about the AU, why wouldn't the public be? Yeah, the market were. I mean, you think about the Forte, the base level car, it was, it was sort of like a modern day Edsel in a way. It was a model that was built for a market that no longer existed when it was released. It was a car that nobody wanted. Yeah. Nobody wanted a 1970s style, hose out, basic, yeah. nasty car. And yeah. all the grey plastics, they, they weren't even the same colour grey. It was just the most funereal, unattractive interior you could possibly imagine. In a car that had the potential really to be great. In fact, I would say objectively, in most respects, it was a superior car to the VT Commodore. Well, it was extremely robust. And there were a lot of engineering uh, innovations that came in that, that no one ever remembers. You know, the variable cam, cam timing, that beautiful twin wishbone rear suspension, no one talks and about that And the marketing, anymore. the marketing. The punters yeah. had no idea mm. what a brilliant independent rear suspension was under that car. Mm. And that's because Ford didn't explain it to them. The AU's mission was to destroy Holden's new VT Commodore on the track. But its poor results from 1999 to 2002 show it was never as good a race car as its VT and facelifted VX Commodore rivals. The AU Falcon never won at Bathurst and tasted victory in only eight of the 52 championship rounds contested. In other words, a mere 15% of the spoils went to Ford in a two-make series with a theoretical 50% chance of winning. Ford clearly did not get a good return on its investment. So what went wrong? Ironically, it came down to aerodynamics, an area in which the AU initially appeared to have an advantage. The front spoiler, side skirts, rear wing and rear diffuser, all developed in a US wind tunnel, resulted in a car that lacked consistency over a race distance, a problem that was only partly cured by the end of its racing days. Sadly for Ford teams, that was another day for the unloved AU that could not come quickly enough. Remember, you can build your own virtual garage on the Shannon's Club website. G'day, my name's John. I'd like to introduce uh, everyone to my uh, 1998 Series 1 AU XR8 Ford on this uh, Bright and sunny day, haha. -ha. I've uh, had the vehicle approximately 15 months. Back at the Ford Motor Company, it was uh, leased out as a Ford executive driven vehicle. And once it's reached its uh, 5,000 kilometre service, it was then passed on for sale at uh, one of the dealerships. And this happened to be Davison Ford in Mildura. Specs are this is a standard XR8. Under the bonnet, it's a class of a 4.9 litre uh, Windsor motor uh, producing 185 kilowatts at the uh, flywheel. The particular model comes out with a 220 kilowatt motor. Yeah, when the first was uh, released back in 98, there were a lot of people, especially Ford owners, who despised the shape. Ford decided, okay, let's get into it and let's redesign the whole shape. Let's give it a bit of a curve outside of the old square look that they used to have with the, uh, the XDs, XEs. <laughs> well, they brought them out in such uh, quantities that uh, sales figures did go down. And this was classed as a, a no-no amongst Ford fans. There's been probably, I'd hate to say, but one of the ugliest cars Ford has ever built. I love it. I honestly love the shape of the car, especially the XR8, with its bulgy four lights coming out of the bonnet, the appearance from the rear when you're driving up to the car, the outline, the balloon shape of the panels of the actual body style. But what else can I say? It, people love them or they don't. I love it. Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon joins us for Hammer Time. Hello, Hello Chris. How are you going? Welcome, Hello. Chris. Hello. The AU Falcon. 
Do you see many of those across the blocks at the Shannon's auctions? I've got to say we don't, actually. Mm. We really don't see them through the auction uh, scene. Um, what we do see, I think, is probably a, a strong club movement. And I think it's a very specialised market with the AU. Yeah. Um, so we do see a lot of the Tickford models and the XR8s, XR6s through the clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think also through the classifieds, some of the classifieds that target muscle cars right. uh, predominantly, we, we, we do see some of those on there. The Tickford mm. cars are quite cherished, I think, by a very small number That's of right. collectors. That's yeah, right, yeah. Yes. There are a sort, small number of collectors that uh, definitely love the Tickfords. Mm. I mean, we see a few of them come through from an insurance perspective, coming in for revaluations. Um, so that's probably the part that we do see with the Tickfords. And are they worth a reasonable amount of money? Are they doing okay? Or? Yeah, look, I think they're doing okay in the, in the market. They're holding their own. But they're not um, up with HSVs, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. It's hard one to say, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't think there's a huge uh, disparity in the prices mm. uh, with a, you know, similar years of HSVs. Uh, but yeah, they've got their own uh, following, absolutely. But some of those cars, you know, toward the end there, like the, the T3 Tickford series, you know, that beautiful stroked yes. 250 kilowatt motor. Yeah. I mean, you know, even the guy who built the engines put his little plate on there. It bespoke almost like a hand built car. Yeah, really. it was very, yeah, very, sort, was of, very sort of yeah. Aston Martin yeah. in the way that yeah. they approached that. And, and that yep. car, you know, you really don't see a lot of those around it. They're a very special car. Did it come too late? Yep. In the piece, ah uh, yes, I think it's already the argument. argument. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe that is an argument. But you're right. I mean, I think you know the general public probably don't realise mm. much about the T3 and uh, you know and the performance of the T3. Fantastic car. Yep, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely one to look out for. And there's other there's other cars in the range, of course. I mean, the AU Ute was the first time they went to that you know, that cab chassis sort of Holden one tonner style. That was enormously yeah, popular, yeah. wasn't Especially it? Especially the XR6 and the XR8 versions. That's mm. right. Yeah, we, we saw that very popular with the tradesmen, and I mean, you know, were. we're still seeing it today with the tradesmen. They're still mm. using it. Uh, but even people who've got Ford collections, I think, love to have one of those Utes around just for carting things around. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, still around. Are. Yeah, and there's a bit of interest in them still. Yes, I yes, I think so. so. Yeah. Just never worked with the sedans, but the Utes hit the spot. And of course we had uh, the Fairlanes, the LTDs, the luxury versions, yep. uh, which are sought after by collectors. But I imagine now that these are really good value for money. This Great is value for money. You know, very good value for money. I think yeah. for what you got as a package and, and given the cost that they were brand new, mm. uh, the yeah, interior great, space and the boot, yeah. and spitfold yes. rear seat yeah. for the practicality, very good vehicle. Mm. Yeah, well, good value, good value for money, isn't it? So yeah. to be a practical classic for someone to get, wouldn't it? Given the, the value for money, how much you pay for them, the parts, backup, all that sort of stuff just falls into place for that sort of car. Potentially, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Chris. No problem. And keep in mind, you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's Auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a lasting competition image of the AU Falcon or any other car you've seen on the show, visit autopix.com.au. It's interesting in the AU Falcon, you know, in a funny way it sort of saved Ford Motor Company there because they got such a shock by the failure of the AU. They invested an enormous amount of money in developing the BA and extended the life of the Falcon for you know, more than a decade and a half. Well, it's quite a paradox really because they got into it even before the BA, they mm. made extensive improvements to the AU2. Mm. And the BA was almost effectively like a new car with a very high calibre of engineering and design mm. and very nice materials used. They would learnt the lesson so hard, mm. they made sure it would never happen again and probably kept the Falcon alive, the Falcon, the real rear-wheel drive Falcon alive longer than it might otherwise have been. I think, I think it should be pointed out too, the engineering that went into that AU, I mean, as much as the problems it had in its public perception, I can remember out in the bush just seeing AU Falcons everywhere. Like the guys out in the sticks, they were racking up like a million kilometres on these things. And you and still, still see going them. Strong, and still you still going. see them now. Yeah. yeah. Now that's a proof uh, positive, I think, of how good the car was fundamentally. There were just other problems surrounding its marketing and engineering. And they were big problems. Big problems. It spoiled a potentially brilliant car. Absolutely. We hope you've enjoyed this look back at the AU Falcon and we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV.